Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayers8.com. My name's Alexander, and I guess what I should say is welcome to the biggest unboxing video of the year. Uh, and we're like two months into it at the time of recording, so who knows when you're watching this, but um, this is uh, Enemy, th sorry, The Enemy is at the Gates from Compass Games. So this is Battle for Berlin 1985. So this is part of their um, company scale series. But it is also part of the modern war line within that. So uh, we've played a mm, we played at least one CSS game, which was their um, Saipan, which I think was the first one in that series. Wonderful, but it was World War II. Um, they've done a bunch since then. We actually own a couple. Like I have Guam: Return to Glory, and Grant has. I'm pretty sure he has the uh, Montpellier one. But yeah, well, and, and they, they did, uh, th th there's, a, there's a Russian one, which I think is part of this series, I don't remember. And then th they have a lot of these. Um, these are big, grand tactical style games. Um, so the enemy is at the gates. This is a massive game. You do need to have a lot of space if you want to play the whole thing. However, there is a lot of smaller scenarios within it. Uh, and this is, a you know, it's 1985, World War III, Cold War Gone Hot, that kind of um, hypothetical. So, uh, series designer is Adam Starkweather. He also did this particular volume as well. Um, and it is huge, right? So, not many Compass games, at least from what I have on the shelves, come in these big three-inch boxes. And there is a ton of stuff in here. And if you're going to punch it and put it in trays, you might still not have enough space. Uh, but uh, it is a, an, a lot of maps. I think there's at least four maps and then another smaller one. And then it's like, oh gosh, how many counters do they say in here? Uh, nine counter sheets, yeah. <laughs> and, and, the comp that, and the reason that is is because it is a company scale system. You are playing with, um, at, at the company level, at a massive, um, you know, s geographical scale comparatively. So you're, you have like platoons of heavy weapons and specialized weapons that you're moving within companies uh, and, and those are under battalion. Like it's, it's very detailed, it's wonderful, um, but you know, it's not for the faint of heart, right, size wise. So let's open this bad boy up. Uh, so the first thing we're getting is a bag of bags. You will desperately need these if you're not gonna do um, counter trays. You have 4D10. And these come sealed for freshness, so you know that they're going to be good. And then we're going to get into all of the all of the paper. So I'm actually going to pull everything out, just so you can see how much of this is in there, right? So when you get the game, the box is already pretty full. You could get at least one counter tray in here, two with some lift lid, but you're going to remove this massive, massive stack of these. So. I think you're very easily gonna get two counter trays in here and you, with some squeezing, could probably get three if you needed three, which we might do because those counters are on very thick gray core, which is great, but you know, it's, there's also the size consideration as well. So first up, we have the paper. Uh, so let's look at the CSS, the company scale system rules of play. So this is the 2.0 rules. We've not played with the 2.0 rules, so I will be uh, plowing into these and kind of reading through them. But you, you know, very detailed broken up sequence of play. And then we're gonna go through the actions and activations, line of sight rules, uh, which the terrain and the way that the maps are marked make everything very clear with how to read those um, uh, movement and attack rules, assault actions. So kind of the, the generic stuff that you'll be doing in those, rally, move, attack, right? All of that's in here. Then we get on to the exclusive rules. So for reference, the series rules, are, there's an abbreviated sequence of play, an index, you're looking at 40 turns of play, basically. 40 pages of rules, sorry. Then we're gonna get to the rules for this specific game, which have, look like a good 25 pages of rules. Uh, but what I will say is, is that these are printed, 
Look at how small this font is, the font size. But this is a much larger font size, and we do have a lot more diagrams in here. So, yeah, it's 25 pages of rules, but this is much less daunting than the core rules from that standpoint. So, when you hear the 25 pages of additional rules, it's, it's not as bad. I swear it's not as bad. And I do wonder, yeah, NATO special rules, if any of these are optional that you could leave out if you're so inclined, doesn't look like it. Um, you have, so yeah, this is, this is the map, right? So it's four maps, and then there's this little five, this little inset map here as well. But yeah, a a absolutely massive uh, game scale if you're doing the whole thing, which we love to see. Separately, we have the scenario book. Um, so in here we have all of the different scenarios, and there's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of them, right? So we have uh, introductory scenarios, which would be much smaller typically, then we have these advanced ones, and then we have our campaign game as well. So yeah, we're just going to play on like a little bit of one of the maps for, for this one. We're going to take the, I presume, the Tempelhof Airport in southern Berlin, or the Spandau map, where you're going to um, take west uh, Berlin. But yeah, lots of these, and so we have the advanced scenarios, which I think are much longer, uh, have multiple maps, and you're going to go through, you know, probably night turns and all the different air rules as well. And then the campaign game, right? Huge campaign game. Here's all the setup. All of our cup contents, this is a chit draw game. And then all of our divisional displays and how we're gonna set those up, which we'll get to, and our reinforcements and stuff. So big, big game, but can be flexible with how big and small you wish to play it. Um, let's see, let's get some of this paper so we can have a look through. So, uh, kind of turn track, victory point track, t uh, game records track. Everything's on here. So we have all of our time slots throughout a single day, and we're going to play through basically four days of this. Oh, come on. You have a box for the Stasi prison? Come on. <laughs> That's awful, but you know it's going to be a good game. Uh, so this is, a, this is a big single sheet that you can have. So we have the Allied Forces. We'll get those separately there. So this is our uh, Allied Forces uh, Brigade display. So you're going to have the, the Berlin Brigade, and you're going to have a holding boxes for transport, routed units, uh, and bits and pieces like that. For the, like the Berlin Infantry Brigade, kind of what I was talking about earlier, you're going to use this display to literally pick up um, like support weapons. You're going to put them into this box, and then, you know, after a certain amount of time, they're going to slide to the available box that you can then redeploy those somewhere else within that brigade. And it's the literal, instead of moving those pieces on the board, you just kind of take them all off and you can warp them around. But the time delay here means that there's less pissing around on the board. Excuse my French. Like, you're not doing that so much of... Because there's a lot of counters in this game. You're doing... It reduces some of that on here, which, which I do really appreciate. Game records track, uh, West German police, uh, and then the French as well, because you've got the, the the US, the British, and the French. I'm very curious to see how that um, how that breaks down, what multinational uh, you know cooperation looks like, and then the West German police kind of within all of that. I'm just so curious. Oh, this is I, I'm very excited. I'm kind of losing my mind a little bit, but how fun this is going to be. Uh, so over here we have very similar type of things here, but there's just more of these. Uh, so we have the, the Aussies here with their motorized uh, rifle divisions, uh, National Defense Forces, and the uh, Volkspolizei. And then we have, you know, m more... Oh, come on, the Stasi. Gross. Uh, and then actual forces, uh, armed forces as well. And then 35th Motorized Rifle Division as well. But very similar uh, kind of what we're doing with these displays wise. Then separately we have our charts and tables. These should be identical. They do look to be. 
Uh, so we've got one for each player. So we've got our CRT and our summary and explanation of those. Assault sequences, assault modifiers. Bear in mind, this is quite small. So just know that, you know, you can either print these off, make them a bit bigger or just strain your eyes a little bit. That's my, there's a lot of information on them, which is great, but just know that going into it. Terrain effects chart's got everything on it. And one of the things I mentioned earlier is the terrain key has these dots that you'll find within each one of the hexes that contains that so that there's no ambiguity about what that hex is versus what's printed on the map for kind of artwork's sake, which is something I very much appreciate um, in games that, that, you know, some games can be a bit confusing about, oh, what's this particular type of terrain? So next up, we're going to look at the maps. We'll do the counters last, uh, because I think the maps in this one are very interesting. So if you played a CSS game, you know the maps are really detailed and they're really good. Uh, you know, exactly the same thing here. This is the tiny little single piece that's going to go in the corner of the, I don't know if it's the Berlin Mitte and the Berlin Ost maps, but this is a little kind of side piece, so it's just this tiny little card. But the really important thing about this to know is that this is fully card. Like, it's not a paper map. This is fully very, very heavy card. Um, same for all the larger maps as well. Like, this is card. Um, you you will probably want to have some kind of plexi because it's that mix between paper and like cardboard, right? You, this needs to be flattened out and these are quite stiff, which means they're not going anywhere. But, you know, part of that also means that you, you can't just like lay it flat like a piece of paper and kind of hope for the best. This has a little bit of stiffness to it where you'll want some plexi or you want to take some time, you know, lay them all out, weigh them down with some boxes for a few days before you kind of set the game up to play on top of it. So that's just, a, you know, something to, to take note. However, it means these are nigh on indestructible, which this is a game you're going to leave set up for a long time or you're going to take to a big long convention to play it. And over the course of time, this is going to be a game that lasts you probably a lot longer than some of those other ones where the maps kind of fall apart. So I'm, I'm very happy about that, but just know that they really went the extra mile on this, and that's a huge credit to Compass Games for having done that. Uh, so I believe that this is where this little map goes on here. Um, this is just going to slide on into this little bit right there. Uh, it aligns somehow, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that it squeezes on here, kind of like right there. Uh, but it's... That it's it's this little corner and there'll be like a full map down here, but that's that's what this is for, just to fill in that extra little bit of space. Okay, so this is the the Berlin Mitte, which is yep. Look, it's quite big. Uh, I used to live there. <laughs> I've I lived in Berlin for a while, so that's part of the reason I have a have a huge. Um, love for this particular game. Technically, I lived in Neukölln, but Kreuzberg was just at the road and I spent a lot of time there. Like, I've been to Trap Tower Park, I've been to the old Tempelhof, which I believe doesn't exist anymore. Um, gosh, do they, they, yeah, then they got, Schoenefeld has an airport as well, I've been there. But yeah, the maps are, like, this is, this is a, f like a fully functioning road map. Genuinely, if you were to like follow this, like there is a bus route that goes along this road. Like this, this rail track, this is like the S-Bahn that, that goes round that you can get on and off that, that are in here as well. I, I just think that's really neat. Uh, so this is the Spandau map. Like Schloss Charlottenburg is round here. The Olympic Stadium. I've been there. I watched an England Germany game. Anyway, this has become a travel documentary for me. But the the maps are stunning in their quality and in their level of detail. But what we're going to look at, uh, just in a tiny bit more detail, with reference to the terrain effects chart, is the the kind of the hex dots. Um, so I'm going to kind of fold this up so we can get a look at here. So. In, in some games, it's like, oh, you know, if a hex has some woods or, or a bit of town, you know, what is it? And some games are like, 
oh, if, you, if you're drawing line of sight and you clip a tiny bit of that woods, you get a minus one. You know, that's fine in a tactical game, but in a game like this, this hex is the brown with the black dot on it. Wonderful. This hex is the green with the white uh, circle around it. Fantastic. So you know exactly what that terrain type is in that hex. Um, and all their CSS games are like that. And I just think that little extra level of clarity just helps so you don't ever get into those, oh, like this, this one here is a good example. So I've played a number of games where you're like, well, what is this, <laughs> you know? Because does the forest touch the center of the hex? Does that what makes it a green forest hex? But then you compare it to this one where you're like, well, most of it's green, it's kind of in the middle, but this is a brown hex. They went the extra mile to delineate which ones there are, and that is, I, I can't speak highly enough of the little features like that that make a game like this much more playable and doable because they, they're really trying to minimize the stuff that they can minimize so that you focus on the rules and the action, which is what you want from a game like this. So, the last thing that we're gonna look at are these massive stacks of counters. And there's a lot of them, and they are fully printed on very, very thick gray core counters. Again, big credit to them for going the extra mile. I'm gonna be careful with these because um, they're like, they are cut very well and they will, they're kind of falling off this and I don't wanna mess it up and have to tidy all this up and I'm trying to organize them as I punch it. It's much easier than tidying up after a, an unboxing. <laughs> so over here we have our, these are UK forces or British forces. I believe we have American forces over here. And so what you can see is we've got a lot of our different special weapons so you have, you know, Milan teams, which are those um, guided missile rockets. You have specific chieftain tanks. Uh, you have all sorts of, like, an RAF security squadron. It's just, you know, it's the security forces around the airbase kind of a thing. Um, the, the little details, you know, we've got some military police. We have our rifle companies. But you get into the extra details of, you know, here's my little... Um, heavy weapons squads, uh, you get to that extra level of crazy detail about like, cool, we need these guys, uh, you know, to defend against the oncoming tank spearheads. Cool, I gotta get them there. And that's part of, you know, that's a big chunk of the game is making that happen. Uh, here we have a massive sheet. I don't know what these ones are, but these look like the combat vests. I wonder if this is police. Uh, this is like the, because they had the Polizei for both the Aussies and the Wessies. So I, I presume that that's kind of what this is, um, which I think is, again, very interesting, mobilizing kind of the local police forces. We've seen that in uh, a lot of different conflicts, but I've never played a game that did that in any meaningful way anyway, especially at this scale. Uh, I think this is the Stasi, which is just, that's wonderful just to be able to, you know, have those guys, and then you get to, you get to destroy them. Awesome. Uh, and these, all, all the different colors line up with those, they're buried under here, um, those brigade displays, again, for ease of use. But the details on, uh, to me, very crisp, very clear. When you get into the tanks, you get the unique tank silhouettes and the, well, and the, like the BMPs, for example, self-propelled guns, you get unique silhouettes on, on all of those armored vehicles. They are dual-sided, because uh, a lot of these can be motorized or deploy, and you drive around on a big old map trying to do all that. Here we have, I think this is, did we get to the Russians? Were the Russians red or were they a burgundy? I think this, I can't remember the colors because I've got it all buried under those maps. But yeah, tons and tons of forces. There's just, there's a lot here. And we start to get into a few of the administrative markers. Um, so we do have ground support, air units, prepared defense markers, some organization or disorganizational levels as well. Uh, hex ownership markers, concentrated fire markers, like it's that detailed of a game. And then we've got more of those here, 
prepared assault markers, hero markers, pinned markers, more disorg levels as well. On fire markers, wonderful. And the last sheet, we've got some sabotage counters, barrage markers, uh, illumination for night flares and night turns and things like that. And on the back here as well. Uh, we do have some um, errata counters for the folder gap down here as well. So if you have the folder gap and you want those, um, those to come in this package as well. But yeah, that's, that's, that's everything. <laughs> that's everything. That's everything you get in the box. It is a ton. I am hilariously excited to play this. It is probably unlikely that we will play the whole full game. Uh, I think it says that it takes 60 hours to do the whole thing. I like that it's only four days. Yeah, sure, there's like 12 turns in a day, but the idea of four days makes it seem less daunting. I don't know if that's just a psychological thing. I'm like, oh, it's only four days, that's fine. Uh, a day will take you like a full actual day in real life to play, which is funny. But um, the games where it's like, oh, this take this is this covers like thirty five days. There's only four turns per day. That thirty five days feels like a lot longer than it. But uh, in this one, I, I, we've played the system. I I want to dive back into it. We've not played the system in this particular time period. Um, love things like World at War eighty five storming the gap, which is a similar topic but at a totally different scale and i'm i'm just excited to play it at this scale uh, so if you like css if you like gts uh, this is um css and gts are very very similar in their ethos and what they're trying to do um this is it's kind of like the, the the answer to gts from compass so if you've played one of if you played a gts game you'll be familiar with the kind of thinking that you need and the style of game that it is and the scale so you could jump into this um, very easily. So I'm, I'm very excited to play this. I'm very excited to play at this scale. And yeah, this is the, the game to get me to play a World War Three, you know, um, Cold War Gone Hot game, which is not something that I'm mega excited about, but this is the one, right? I've, I've lived here, I've been to all these places, and you're playing with troops that aren't necessarily like fully armed and mechanized forces. I think playing with the police inside of Berlin is just going to be so interesting. Uh, so I I'm very excited to, to dive in this, but thanks for sticking with me for this odyssey of an unboxing. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.